thank you everybody for coming along. I'm, I'm so excited to do this webinar, partly because I really love Amplify FE and we've been on a journey together. And also because I just want to share the news about the Green Changemakers program. Um, it's work of my heart, absolutely. And we've got Juliet in the room with us today, who is one of the Green Changemakers and who you'll see her beautiful photo on the first slide there. So this work has been completely joyful. And if I can begin by speaking personally, it's enabled me to bring together so many strands of my work, my work with Joss on the AP Connect project, and my thinking over the past decade or so into a program that the world needs. First of all, to tell you a bit about it in a practical sense, uh, Green Changemakers was originally a devolution project in the West Midlands and Warwickshire, funded by the Learning and Skills Innovation Fund, which comes from the, the DfE. And it was the dream of Fircroft's principal, Mel Lenahan. So for those of you who don't know Mel or don't know Fircroft College, it's an adult education college based in the former home of George Cadbury, the chocolate people. It has a social purpose mission, and it was the first college to declare a climate emergency a good few years ago now. Fircroft was the perfect host for the program with its beautiful surroundings and extensive rewilded gardens. But the program ran across all the West Midlands and Warwickshire colleges and other providers, and we hope to take it nationwide. So we have 40 green change makers from 18 organizations at the moment. But I want to begin with a word about language. We deliberately chose to use the language of green skills instead of the more commonly used sustainability. <clears throat> there are three reasons for this. First and foremost, why would we not want to capitalize on our unique selling point? FE is pretty much all about skills. We're the only sector that's about skills and that's becoming more true for adults um, than it ever was, as well as young people. So we need to shout from the rooftops about green skills for a sustainable future. And that's point two, the way I use the word sustainable there. By using sustainability synonymously with green skills, we're preventing ourselves from making the most of this really useful word. And then finally, though this is a harder sell to some people, using sustainability leaves that uneasy impression that after everything, we still humans, we see this earth as a bunch of resources to be exploited. And that's not working out well. Humans need to get on a different and more reciprocal footing with the planet. But you do you, we're not telling anybody what language to use, this works for us. The Education and Training Foundation recently published research that they've been doing over the past couple of years about FE as a self-improving system. And I was part of a think tank which contributed to that. The research took a systems thinking approach which we have ad adopted for our Green Changemakers program. And there were two key takeaways. One is on the left that FE has a split purpose. Are we about social justice? improving lives and communities, or are we about qualification outcomes, inspection and audit? And of course, we have to balance both. And that's the tension that every member of staff carries to work with them each day. It's exhausting, but we are where we are. On the right, looking at FE as a system, there is a key feedback loop which is currently not functioning are not functioning well. We're doing all we can to improve effectiveness, yet FE is not perceived within the wider education and social policy systems as successful. This trust, this is about trust, isn't it? It's about trust and it's about infantilization. And we could talk about that for the next hour. But I would prefer to explore with you how the green change makers approach can begin to, to heal that loop. And of course, that's not the biggest picture. Our aspiration is to ultimately protect and serve the environment. 
And here's Juliet again and her beautiful question that she developed during I think an environment session where we generated possibility questions and we just all loved this one. It's become our mantra. As I said at the top, we are attempting a paradigm shift and that's a word that's thrown around, but it means changing everything. We are attempting to fundamentally change FE, drawing together that split purpose of social justice and accountability. Will we pull it off? As another green change maker, Tom Gidlow said during one of our research circles, we have never had an advanced civilization facing what we faced before, so we don't know. But we're working on culture, we're working on strategy, and we're working on systems. We're having a good try. And if we fall short, we will still have done some excellent work. What makes the programme different from anything that's gone before rests on three central pivots. We initially plan to teach green skills to teachers with a companion boot camp, uh, sort of train the trainers. We soon realised this was futile. Teachers in FE, you are subject specialists with a dual professionalism. You are experts. Through AIM High Earth's 15 green skills, which I'll talk a bit more about, provided one framing for our programme, we learned the term maven, someone who is deeply enmeshed in the knowledge, skills and behaviours of their specialism. It would be both patronising and infantilising and pointless for me to try and generically teach mavens about their own area. I'm not a plumber, a childcare expert or a graphic designer. We have to learn to trust teachers to update their own knowledges and pedagogies. I know that's not easy. That infantilization that comes right from the top, from the DFE, makes people stick in the mud. We have to empower teachers to want to update their practice. But who's going to do that? And that's where the concept of the Green Change Makers was born. So the first pivot is that it's shifting from teaching green skills to teaching change maker skills. And this is work that Joss and I have been deeply engaged in for the last few years. The skills, knowledges and behaviours to move organisations from good intentions to long term sustainable change. And that change needs to be systemic. We don't have time to play around. We need to make a dent in systems as well as the strategy and mindset of organisations. The second pivot was shifting from planning to energy. Now, this is a hard one to articulate, and I think I've not quite found the words. But if you imagine a standard leadership programme, that would get people identifying an improvement project on day one, teach participants some generic stuff and then mentor them to work in their own context and produce a report based on the intervention, which would ultimately sit on a website somewhere so other people could access. We've all been involved in projects like that and, and sometimes they've been amazing projects. But back to Tom's earlier comment, how can we know what the outcome needs to be? None of us have ever faced these challenges before. So you see the limitations of this approach. We front loaded the activities and then created space for co-creation and inquiry. So change makers were co-designing the program as we went along and across four cohorts, each cohort inflected the others. And then the third pivot, shifting from individual to community. Margaret Wheatley, uh, the writer and thinker, wrote that the answer is community doesn't matter what the question is to any question the answer is community and that's in my heart I think many people here know that I was a community worker I've got a community workers heart the green change makers course was not enough on its own so we quickly brought change makers together in a whatsapp group simple as that to strengthen the community across the four cohorts we contributed to the green skills summit in West Midlands in January planned staff development input like a massive day at BMET the other week, last week, good grief, 
gathered resources to share with other educators and designed an architecture for the virtual green skills hub which is part of phase two of our project and uh, we'll be launching that in march with the help of colleges west midlands that same whatsapp group enabled us to design and host a green skills conference for nearly 100 people in at solihull college in march this year in three weeks Juliet and I and three of our Green Changemaker colleagues have submitted a book chapter this morning. We're doing all sorts of different things that they're all about amplification and extending the impact. So four cohorts, 40 Green Changemakers, the program ran between November 2023, March 2024, late start, bureaucracy. We also ran a number of green skills courses for teachers, um, where we worked out that green skills versus sustainability thing, led teachers to resources and introduced the change making concepts. We hope that many more people will return to do the full Green Change Makers program next year and join the community. So I mentioned energy before as a pivot from the standard format of planning for improvement. The role of the Green Change Maker is to bring a change making energy which we call potential and I know some of you will have heard that concept and I am going to unpick it. They will bring potential to their organizations and that concept is at the very heart of our program. Some of you will have heard me talk about it before. I think I'm on the wrong slide. Ha, wrong order. So potentia comes from an unexpected place, the work of a long dead Jewish philosopher called Baruch Spinoza. Writing in Latin nearly four centuries ago, Spinoza had two words for power at his disposal in that language. Potistas is what we mean in English by power. So power as usual, hierarchy, chains of command and control. Potential is a different kind of energy. It's our will to live, our desire to be joyful. It's a change making power and it works best when we share our potential with others and are energized in return. And you will have felt it. Those people, Joss and I, Joss always does this for me, but I know I do it for her as well. You go away buzzing from a conversation. We need both kinds of power. So to use a Yorkshire word, we need the clout of potistas to shift stubborn systems and we need the influence of potential to bring about change and those two words clout and influence are really helpful for distinguishing those two definitions of power my friend ali who i worked with at northern college who was involved in the fab work chloe now principal at the cooperative college she used to call it potatoes and polenta, polenta but that didn't really help anybody so clout and influence. A good career in a traditional sense is two thirds potistas as we rise up the organization and one third potential. But a good change making career, that ratio is reversed. One third potistas, two thirds potential. That's the green change makers. And you'll see the unicorn all the way through this presentation. Golden unicorns green change makers, people who are waking up potential in themselves and others. And you will know the buzzy ideas generating golden unicorns in your organization, whether they are focused on climate change or not. So potential is a powerful concept which is resonating deeply in FE. Later this week, Joss and I are going to be training all the ETF staff in the practice and principles of potential change making. Imagine the potential of that. There's a shift in the public mood. Globally, people are waking up to the problems in the world. Nationally, there's a tentative hope that the new government could change things, even if we don't know how. And in our organisations, we're tuning in again to that social purpose. Many organizations are making decisions and changes which are genuinely based on practicing and embodying values. And this is making people fall in love with their jobs again. As we found on the AP Connect Advanced Practitioners Program that Joss and I and Chloe worked on together, people came to us jaded 
didn't they, and left with a new desire to do the work. We've heard that so often. So the Green Change Makers programme had three framings. First of all, I've mentioned them before, Aim High Earth's 15 Green Skills, a research-based set of definitions of green skills. There are other framings, of course, such as Educational for Sustainable Development and the SDGs. It doesn't matter which frame organisations choose to drive the work forward. We chose the 15 Green Skills because they're expansive. The work of change making is to influence the people and ultimately the systems and strategy around you. So the job of green change makers is to convince everyone and themselves that they already embody some aspect of green skills, whether that's around technical thinking, nature thinking, people thinking or systems thinking. FE naturally is obsessed with technical but we need the whole range of skills. Heat pumps alone will not save life on the planet. They make a contribution. So the 15 green skills are effective in working with others, knowing that you already have the skills to serve and protect our planet, our earth, our mother earth is empowering. Secondly, the thinking environment, familiar to some of you, I know a set of processes that enable us to think more independently and think better together. The energy of potential brings an incredible momentum when we're an adventure ready squad working on change making initiatives together. And this is one of the 15 green skills. But we can't ride that wave of energy without taking time to pause. Building thinking environments into our systems releases potential and it also compels us to take pause. When we pause, we notice more and we reach deeper into our thinking. We get beyond assumptions and move together into new ideas. And then finally, the four seasons of change making. This is our work, mine and Joss's, as part of our social enterprise, FE Constellations. It's a theory of change born out of all of those years, an empirical theory born out of those years of working on professional development, professional learning programs, building communities online so that people can um, do what they're doing in FE, that amazing FE landscape that Amplify FE arises from and contributes to and keeps us all knowing about one another. So the four seasons implement those concepts of potential and pause, which is so essential. And I said this to keep momentum, to prevent things fizzling out. We begin by getting unstuck, taking a clear look at where we're at, identifying the values in our practice, the things we have to do and the things we do for the sake of it. We move into releasing potential throughout the organization. Change makers figure out their patterns of influence and they use this to wake up the potential in others, leaning on the clout of potestas where they need it. The third season is gaining clarity, and this is the work that green change makers have to influence their organizations to do with the ongoing support of the change maker community. Together, they will co create hitherto unimagined futures for FE. We can't know what this will be until we clear a path to collectively imagine it. And that's where we come back to impact. I'm going to mention a report here from the Griffith Center for Systems Innovation, which you can pick up from that QR code. At the end of the first phase of the Green Change Makers program in March this year, we had to send an impact report to the DFE who funded us. Fair dues. We could tell them what we'd done and how many people we'd trained. But the deadline was five weeks after the end of our time together, two of which had been the important reflection time of Easter holiday. It was an impossible ask. Luckily, we had stuff to tell them because if you remember, we front loaded the skills development and so change makers had already been doing the work. But the real work was only just beginning to happen in pockets as green change makers work their magic in staff development, curriculum planning, strategic working groups, 
we were not prepared to leave it there. Together, we are co-researching the programme and its impact over a year and further if we have the energy. Using the co-evaluation techniques we learned on the AP Connect programme. This is research that nobody has asked for and that nobody is paying for. We found capacity within the programme because it's important work to do, but there's that tension again. Is FE about social purpose? Is it about long-term impact? Or is it about meeting the requirements of the funding, which is short-termist? We are where we are, and for the minute, we've found a way to do both. Im and Deep Core of Civic Square, <clears throat> fellow travellers in this work, do look up Civic Square on social media. She's been raising awareness of the limitations of impact as we understand it. Impact is important, of course. There's no point in keeping doing things, the same things in the hope that they'll work and we have to account for public money. But it's definitely more complex than we're led to believe. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is running out as the summer approaches. Imi led us to the work of the Griffith Centre for Systems Innovation in Queensland, Australia. Their work is around viewing impact as long-term social, economic and environmental change, as they see here in the long now. As green change makers, we have centred ourselves in the long now. We're trying to stretch that moment so that we're working together for a more just future whilst acknowledging the past. So what next for the green change makers? And, and this image, all the images um, uh, are taken from our um, Green Skills Conference. And this was Laura Broderick's beautiful systems map, um, graphic illustration of the day. So what next? Supported by their community as an adventure ready squad, they continue to make inroads into the systems, structures and mindsets of their organisations. Tough work. They're invested in potential and the need to regularly pause and rest. We continue to gather impact evidence and we are always happy to share. We've co-designed a storyboard for the virtual green skills hub, which will provide a single point of access for green skills, resources, training and connection. That's currently with the designers. Green change makers are collecting the material and a big shout out for Cov Squad, where uh, Juliet works, her green change makers team contributing loads to that. We'll launch at the end of March 2025. We write in for the FE media, contributing to a book, pulling a podcast together, submitting conference abstracts. We're finding, finding our voices. We will continue to co-research the process and impact of the Green Change Makers program via our regular research circles, which bring us together to reignite our potential. You will see so much evidence coming out of these in the months to come. West Midlands Combined Authority have supported our business case for growth at Fircroft, enabling the college to mainstream the Green Change Makers program into the standard offer. So all new change makers from September will join our Adventure Ready squad. And that's just one combined region. We intend that the Green Change Makers paradigm shift will spread outwards from the West Midlands to the rest of the UK. We're already beginning conversations with four other regions about this, so watch this space. West Midlands, you'll always be the pioneers. But if you would like to bring this paradigm changing program to your organisation or even your region, please get in touch. We leave you with our systems map with Juliet's question at the top left there. This is how we're going to do it. It's complex, yes, and it's also beautiful. We don't know the answers, but we hope you'll join us on the path. And if you want to get involved, if you want to talk about how you can bring this to your area, then, you, you know, find me. I've got a Fircroft email now, but if you've got my old email, you can get me on that. Here's my WhatsApp. 
We're also, um, we've got Green Change Makers accounts on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So just follow us and see what's happening. And that's it, Chloe, if you want to stop recording now. <laughs>